Howdy doody everybody, my name is Kev Gooey and welcome back to Fantasy Star Online 2. And as you guys can see, this is a different intro because my hair is so oofy and long and this might be the only time I've ever had my hair grow out this long was like at least 10 years ago. Or, no, actually, and actually more than 10, like 13 years ago. Holy moly. No, actually, 15. I would say 15 years ago. Oh my gosh. That makes me an old, old man. Boy. Anyways, that was weird. But yeah, so I'm showing you guys this because the chances of you guys, um, well, seeing me with this much hair again is a lit, is like, is like, um, Teeny bit to know, because I also did um because I'm get I'm gonna get a haircut soon. I'm gonna get a go to the uh, barber shop, get it all uh, cut off and stuff, shaved off, and I mean I like this, but like when you go through my hair like this, like it's been so long since I've like been able to do this, so it makes it feel like. Oh, it becomes a habit after I just like, okay, I'm gonna play with my hair and then like I find knots and I'm just trying to hold out the knots and I just want a silky smooth, but you know, that, that feeling. But anyways, and then my hands get all oily <laughs> from, you know, the shampoo or the conditioners and stuff like that. But anyways, that's not the point. Point is, why I'm doing this talking to you right now is because um, today or uh a few days ago um, of this recording um, or being released pu pu I guess publicly released and um, you know published on YouTube on my channel I would um, I would be getting a haircut well getting a haircut the next day um, after recording this but publishing this would be a few days before confusing stuff but yeah, so I'm gonna get my hair cut and stuff like that, and I'm getting tested for the uh, COVID-19. Um, again, uh, because I found someone that they're gonna do the sensory nerve test. The um, I forgot what's the um, acronym for that. Um, acronym for it, but. It's the it's the same testing, but they do it with uh, the testing of the nerves and see the impulses, the sensory stuff. But we're waiting to see. But they wanted me to go do a do a test first, just to see that I'm not. Um, I don't have this illness. I don't have um the virus inside of me, or I'm not. I don't. I'm not sick from it because they don't. Because when I actually go see them for this test, I'm not gonna be able to have um. Uh, Yes, my mouth covered because I need to talk and stuff like that. And then it, you know, to, I mean, it could be work, but then it's just harder. And, and with other people around, it might be kind of, you know, it'd be a hazard around people. So just gonna, uh, just hopefully it goes well, knowing that I don't have COVID. Uh, again, just, you know, since this, this is my second time testing it, I uh, so ooh. and then a few more days when they find the results or let me know about the results, then they will actually um, talk to me um, when they would set up the day to do the um, the testing, you know, tests, which I am not fond of because or not in favor. Or not fond of it because it's needles and they're pricking you. So, meh. Other than that, like literally, just you can't see. Just literally straight down my my face, my body, symmetrically, left side. This is my this is my uh, anatomically left side. So yeah, it's been. I mean, it's been. Going well, it's been going all right. Where it's, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Some days has bad days where the the sensory feels more numbing, 
and um the less the less numbing and less um and then the less prickly um in the needle's feelings that's much better but when the numbness or more of the pins and needles feeling but then more of that is is just not good so it just these fluctuations during the days it really makes me feel like i don't want to do stuff or i do want to do stuff and then i know it's excuses but it's throughout my life have starting with my headaches my hemicrania continua I, the only thing that i was able to control well it wasn't really anything it was nothing i, I had nothing i could not control anything so the only thing that i could control when i found out about this was researching finding out what would be the cause of this what could be the cause of my headaches what could be this went through a bunch of tests went through a bunch of bs stuff testing testing medication test test medication other tests test etc and some some came out you know helpful some didn't botox somewhat helpful um Came with the, uh, came with the, um, uh, the uh, sensory nerve injections, no trigger point injections, and then the facet droid injections. Those were like it wasn't game changing, but it was it, it improved. Um, also, rehab was very helpful in the case that. The neck pulling kind of helped with the with the whole uh, spinal spine because I have uh, the disc the discs are dislocated or kind of um yeah not dislocated but like it's a little bit pushed out so and they kind of want to realign it but at this point it just it got to the point where I had no control over anything like this and it just makes me so exhausted too frustrated and too stressed to really to try and find out what could be the true cause about this but i'm glad that i'm slowly coming back into this and i it, am not and i i am not making excuses for myself i try not to but it always makes it sound like i'm it get, it's all health you know related that it's just I, I can't do this because of health related i can't do this because of health related it's true it is because of health related stuff it's just it's a psychological um weapon um that that pretty much is is what helps you or makes you be motivated to do stuff and like when, when i when i want to do something I, I just think about it and then when i think of what i want to do like record a video um then intruding thoughts of the pain you know intruding thoughts of the pain of of my headaches and then it kind of rebound into another you know turning of the t the um the turntable and turning of the turntable and then it gets to the point where it just repeats itself the repeats of uh, itself of what do i not have control i don't have control of this i don't have control of that i don't have control of this new symptom that i'm having i don't have control of this you of the headaches that though I, I can help manage the pain but I can't control how I'm feeling and it's been it's more or less like a plateau a slow plateau downwards I've noticed from my, my YouTube career so far it's just um I mean with my anime channel it, it literally went went down and she's kind of plateauing at a moment because I have to redo videos and stuff like that but that also makes me feel drained like if i remove all these videos can i and continue would it be the same would people still come because i do the anime stuff i do do i do like to do the anime stuff but it just comes to that it's the um, the power the power of how much endurance and stamina you have and me dealing with so much of of the st of the stamina and exhaustion of of that all it, it's just it's just very very exhausting and then and then my mind just kind of goes around in a circle again just kind of thinking 
I don't want to make a bad video. I don't want to make a bad video, but I, I have to put out a video because I, I want people to know that I'm still here. I'm still here, but in the sense that it's just, it's, hard, it's tough for me because, like, um, as you guys seen that I've tried is with um, not talking with the webcam. That's helping me because it's not, I'm not really focused on what I look like. I mean, you guys can see I look kind of horrible, like terrible. I look, I look terrible. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm exhausted. Um, sleep has been actually a little bit better uh, besides the whole uh, odd hours of been able to sleep before. But um, I did get a uh, uh, change in my medication that does help me sleep um, a bit more. And um, the other one is just not as effective and such. So I have to um, deal with that. And I think the, the whole anesthesia of my whole body, my whole body on the left side is has to do something of uh, unknown, I, th I guess, unknown side effect of something I'm taking. And I think that's it. That's the only thing that I can control is just what I take and such. But right now is to find out what it is or why it's causing this. There's I have no control. So hopefully when we do go to the the, the actual doctor who will be testing it in a lab. Um hopefully I'm not I don't I'm not contagious of the, the COVID because that's what they're doing it for now, so that if I am contagious, they will not let me in. And <laughs> so if I'm not contagious, then I will be able to go in and actually get tested and, and see. For now, like for the past few days, it's just every time I sit down and, and this whole half half my body, literally the left side, just feels like exhaustion, frustration, tiredness, stress. The right side is fine it feels normal like there's a there's a normal C on my right like split right down to my right side there's a normal C so when you get half of your body feeling like it's exhausted and and tired stressed out the other half is just normal it's fine it's not you know not doing bad it's not doing good but it's content at the moment when those things add in together you don't know what you're supposed to be doing because it's like you want to rest. You want to rest your head. You want to rest the, the whole body. But then the, the other part of the body that's fine wants to do something else because it doesn't want to stay lying down for a while. It wants to do something. So like, so like the only, like, uh, only way that, you know, coming to a conclusion to both sides of my body wanting to to do something to relax and or to do something it's more of i just the, the momentum or or the motivation of that just kind of plateaus into a low plateau pretty much which is just kind of lie down and um watch um time for uh, or do a time of how long to watch a tv show or netflix or whatever and and um or just play a game on my phone and just lying down at the, at the least too. So it's just, you get to do something just lying down, you know, kind of. But it's not helping me with recording because recording, I have to actually have, be mentally there. And when, I be, and when I'm mentally there, I focus on the game. But when, when I need to actually focus on myself, I, like right now, I can I can feel the difference between my left elbow and my right elbow touching the arm stands. It feels weird. It, it it just feels different, and it's just that sort of difference, small, minute differences, are what is really attached to me. It's making me feel like something is wrong. Like when when your whole body. Has pain or pins and needles and stuff like that. That is it's usually a warning where your body uh, is telling you something is wrong with your body. Something is wrong. You need to check it out. And in my case, I've done that a lot. Like checking, I getting my body checked out. Got getting all of this checked out, and it stresses me out to the point that it's just very stressful. Uh, I I can't really do anything about it. I don't I don't have that freedom, and the freedom that I'm talking about. 
is um uh, this freedom. Hold on, I'm gonna look for it. But it's a freedom called uh, this. Um, it's called reactance. Well, I'm just gonna call it reactance uh, therapy. Reactance, psych psychological reactance. It is an unpleasant motivational arousal that emerges when people experience a threat to or loss of their free behaviors. So yeah, um, so yeah, a, a reactance theory, or if we just make it reactance theory, assumes that there are free behaviors individuals perceive and can take part at in at any given moment. For a behavior to be free, the individual must have the relevant physical and psychological abilities to partake in it. Must know they can engage in it at the moment or in the near future. Behavior includes, okay, so all that, yeah, um, or uh, behaviors may be explained as to what one does and what one doesn't do. There are several rules associated with free behaviors and reactants. When certain free behaviors are threatened and removed, the more important, the more important a free behavior is to a certain individual, the greater the magnitude of the reactants. Level of reactance has a direct relationship to the importance of the eliminated or threatened behavioral freedom in, in relationship to the importance of other freedoms at the time. When given set of free behaviors. Okay, so. All of what this means is that, is that, okay, go there. So, there is no assumption that a person will aware of reactants. When persons become aware of reactants, they will feel a higher level of self-direction in relationship to their own behavior. In other words, they will feel that if they are able to do what they want, then they do not have to do what they do not want. In this case, when the freedom is in question, the person alone is the director of their own behavior. When considering the direct reestablishment of freedom, the greater the magnitude of reactance, the more the individual will try to reestablish the freedom that has been lost or threatened. When a freedom is threatened by social pressure, then reactance will lead a person to resist that pressure. Also, when there are restraints against a direct reestablishment of freedom, there can be attempts at reestablishment by implication whenever possible. Freedom can and may be reestablished by social implication. When an individual has lost free behavior because of a social threat, then the participation in a free-like behavior by a similar person will allow me will allow one to reestablish one's freedom. Reactance is a motivational state that is aimed at reestablishment of a threatened or eliminated freedom. In short, the level of reactance has, has a direct establishment with the importance of the eliminated or threatened freedom and the proportion of free behaviors eliminated or threatened. So pretty much this kind of in a down, in a, uh, in layman's terms, it's kind of like the rebellious state where someone takes away your privilege, someone takes away your freedom of going, I guess that's just, uh, say freedom of going, uh, I, I guess I'll make it easy, going to see a um urgent care facility let's just um for example they do it that urgent care uh you know those walking urgent cares right then all of a sudden uh no reason they kind of they kind of uh uh you know not allow you in so they take away that freedom so they take away that freedom and then you are unable to do anything because they won't allow you in there. And that kind of makes you feel like you, like, like they stole a part of your freedom as the person to, to do that. But I mean, you know, whatever case is why they did that, you know, you're, you lost that freedom and the response to that Usually is to, I guess, kind of be rebellious to kind of be, um, I guess, I 
Huh. Um. Yeah, that was harder for me to explain, but yeah, but from before, it is, um, it's pretty much the level of reactance has direct relationship to the importance of the eliminated or threatened behavioral freedom in relation to the importance of other freedoms at the time. So, when you take something away, I guess an easier thing was that when you take something away from a child, Their response is, of course, going to be upset most of the time. Upset. And then they likely will cry as the rebellious phase. But, but then they kind of think about it, the reactants. Like, how, like, you're reacting to this, but how far does this reactance go, you know? Like, how much control do you have? How much freedom? Freedom, I will say, as control. Freedom, will you have? And you're not going to have much because your toy got taken. And then that kind of puts you in a, in a bind at the moment. Like, kind of, like a bind where you, you're thinking, if this, if my toys, if my toy isn't safe, what else do I, what else do I need to do to prevent this from happening? To, to stop it from happening? So that's the, you know, without action or what what should i do be doing right now without my toy because i lost my toy i lost my freedom yet yeah i'm not sure what to do, really do because what else what about um well the area around the toy that's that's you know taken or the other toys or, or where the toy is at now like, I can play around it, right? I just can't play with it. You know, you kind of start make, trying to find loopholes to a lot of the stuff. And then it gets to the point where... That, that kind of, well, I guess, okay. from the gist of things, what I'm trying to um, say is that this is pretty much just like that. The reactance theory is... Pretty much put on put upon me. What can I do? What can I really do? What what is what loophole can I do to to make me feel better? Though I lost the freedom of such concepts of yeah. I, well, the concept of my the loss of freedom is the numbness and tingly and pins and needles on my whole left side of the body. So makes me tired. Makes me exhausted. But I have to get up each day. I have to do some extra form of exercise. I need to be active a bit. Yet, the left side, it, it, it's like I lost that control. So I lost the self of freedom. And it just feels like I'm unable to do anything. The rest of my head keeps thinking. I'm unable to do anything because with this, this is a new development that, that just... There's no, I have no control over. This just happens. And with the headaches, it has to do something with that. And if they couldn't find any headache um, um, solutions, a cure for my, my hemicrania continua, then what, what are the chances of them helping to fix this problem? Well, you know, succeed. So it comes to that mindset where it's just like, I think that, that sort of react, my reactions to... Having this is just to go to sleep. Maybe the next day will be much better. And no, that yeah, that does sound like a big excuse, but that is been my, I guess my been my way the whole the whole my whole life. Just kind of do this, do that. If I can't, then then yeah. Um, but I mean, before I mean that that's. When my I got the headaches, that's when I pretty much was like, there are days I can just do that, and that's all I can do because the headache isn't go is is still there, but it's not fully gone and in pain. I think I'll be fine. But then 
this happened with the whole numbness that's a whole different thing it's just like the whole body experiences it not just my head not not just i just want to close my eyes it's just my whole left body just feels like it's like it's wrong something is terribly wrong just get back in bed just relax just just lay down i'll be a better day and such and such because it's just like this is new and scary uh. Yeah, I, I pretty much talked a uh, whole 26 minutes about it, but literally it's just one of those things where reacting uh, therapy um, pretty much is a justification in legitimacy. Um, a positive effect of justification is the limitation of, a, of the threat to a specific behavior or set of behaviors. For example, if, if, if Mr. Doe states that he is interfering with Mrs. Smith's expectations because of an emergency, that this keeps Mrs. Smith from imagining that Mr. Doe will interfere, interfere on future occasions as well. Like, likewise, legitimacy may point to a set of behaviors. For instance, there will be a general assumption that an illegitimate with a person's freedom is less likely to occur. With legitimacy, there is an additional implication that a person's freedom is equivocal. Yeah. So... Yeah, so that so this is the thing that makes me wonder about how people see, see me that I'm trying to explain to you guys what 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 I believe you guys are seeing at, um, for me. You know? If if I if I tell you guys about my lack of freedom, my my whole left body, the numbness, tingly, uh, pins and needles, paresthesia, what is that gonna say um, what 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 am I justifying to you guys? And and the legitimacy of it, you know. And pretty much, I'm just kind of reacting to that. To I'm reacting in a way where I'm kind of seeing some of you guys kind of responding back to me after after this whole talk about. Um, that it could be an excuse, you know, kind of, kind of thing, M mind reading in a way, you know, it could be an excuse. He, you know, he, um, I know he's been ta um, talking about this a while, but I mean, why doesn't, you know, he go see a doctor? Or why isn't he just, you know, get it fixed, take some meds and whatnot. And it's just not that easy. <laughs> And then I would and then I would explain more, yada yada yeah, but yeah, the, the in the consensus is it's that there's just no way for me to really know when all this will go away. I don't think it will ever go away. So the changes of my recording and everything is gonna be a lot different and I don't want it to change, especially for my anime channel. I love that channel so much, but it's just I'm afraid of changing that and then getting it YouTube and then having to and then it might just go away because i mean i've been i was doing good with it i just don't understand why all the hullabaloo about all that even if it wasn't any uh anyways that is the gist of it so without further ado everybody we are going to be playing the game with no uh webcam this time so yeah <laughs> Yeah, so this is my long hair. It's gonna be here until the next time you see me, which will not have this long goofy here that gets in my way and gets tangled up in big messes of wad of stuff. I was gonna say like, uh, you know, wad of uh, hair, because it's just, it was, it's just, oh, it's just tangled up all the time. If I'm, get, I'm getting a haircut, so it's going to get all the way, go shaved away, and it's long. Oh my gosh, I have not had long hair since, like, high school. Literally high school. I have not had super long hair. I I always had it a bit shorter. I, um, thinned out, layered. Oh, it just felt so nice with the air and the water going through. But now, but now it's just, like, eh, it's like hitting a... Like a, like a very food silky wall. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to be continuing this uh, storyline. Um, yeah, we continue the storyline. Uh, 
just with no webcam. Thank you everybody for watching um, or seeing me for now. Thank you for being uh, with me for this whole time and all this health issues, health crisis that's been happening. You guys have been awesome to me and I really want to thank you guys so much for believing in me. Sometimes I, I don't uh, believe in myself just because of all these bad things happening to me. and It just, it just makes it feel like it's just this uh, sign telling me to just not go for it anymore or quit my dreams and the answer is no not it never is never will be but it will be more difficult though it will be more difficult to use more energy than you know needed because of me pushing ahead as the numbness and tingly paresthesia feelings and into the mindset of playing the game Anyways, thank you guys for watching, and we're going to be uh, playing a game in, well, right after, <laughs> we'll be playing the story mode right after uh, my, my webcam goes away. <laughs> so, bye webcam for now, and thank you everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Alright, we are back in the Manto of Suffering. What a great start. Oh yeah, I do have to love. Hello? Hello? Are you a hunter? A ranger? A force? Well, whatever. I'm not picky. Okay. Anyway, I asked around with the hunters and forces, and they said rangers just don't have enough firepower going for them. And they're absolutely right. The foes we're fighting aren't exactly the one-shot-one-kill type. But I prefer it that way. That's the way it should be. <laughs> one-shot-one-kill. I mean, they're enemies, right? I gotta make sure they suffer, and suffer, and suffer, and suffer! Uh-huh. That's why I'm such a gun nut. Big guns, small guns, any and all guns. I don't play favorites, so long as they make things suffer. Makes all, all the gun, gun nut. All the guns nut. Every one of them. I notice you're recoiling. Was it something I said? Uh, no. Okay, weird. Yeah. Now I'm going to Zeno. Okay, remember the date, 226. Hey, how are things? Getting the hang of combat now? Oh, what was your class again? <laughs> well, it doesn't matter when you can be anything. It must be nice being able to change your photon class aptitude as it suits you. Say, what do I look like to you? Do I look like a hunter? Truth be told, my photon class aptitude skews ranger. I insisted on being a hunter anyway, but it ain't easy being a class you're not meant for. I admit, I kind of envy your sheer amount of options. But hey, no use whining about being a have-not. I'll keep doing what I can do. You say I could just go back to being a ranger? <laughs> yeah, sure could. Yeah, that's true. But I wouldn't be able to protect some people if I did. It's got to be hunter or bus for me. Man, why does it feel like all I ever do is gripe when I talk to you? Sorry about that. When did I when did I ever have that on? I don't remember. It's strange though. How come it feels so right? We're wearing the same outfit. Oh it's been quite some time. Me? This is merely a scratch. It's nothing for you to concern yourself over. Why? Why did he hurt you? If you seek Master Gedimhalt, he has already gone ahead. What about him? Yeah. You say that's a cruel way to treat a friend? What does that mean exactly? Are you mocking me? Oh no, she doesn't know what friendship means. I would never presume to be Master Gedimhalt's friend. Even suggesting such a thing is absurd. Then what are you to him? Excuse me, I've said too much. Please forget all of this. 
Sorry, I can't. So, he's... Her mindset is just that... She just wants to be close to get him hope, but whatever means possible. And doesn't want a friend to be one of those things. Friends with get him hope, but what is her plan then? I don't. Huh. Don't trouble yourself worrying about me. Proceed as normal. Yeah, there's something's going wrong. Something's not right about this. About the relationship. It's them again. Oh, it's 326. 326 or 326 before. Okay. It's more important that I... I have to... put an end to him. To Hadrid. Sorry. Uh. I lost my cool for a second there. I don't sense him in the surrounding area. Continuing the search here would be useless. I'm withdrawing. Excuse me. Okay, but bye. Nothing to do with me. Sarah. What? What's spook you? Snow? You might be better off waiting a bit longer if you're going past here. Don't let me stop you though. Oh, where'd, where'd you come Don't from? Don't worry, those are from Arcs. They'll get tired of it and leave any second now. What? I swear, that idiot doesn't know the meaning of the word restraint. Not that it's my problem, of course. I like that, uh... Her... Her... Outfit? Around the, uh... The, uh... Watermelons. They, they have one button on there, just one. died down. It should be safe to go on now, I think. Good luck. Well, I've also started watching uh, this anime called uh, Sword Art Online. Interesting. Very interesting. It's concept. Hey, bonehead! Yeah, you there! The bonehead! I'm bored! So talk to me! Huh. Have we met? I can swear we have. My memory's hazy, but meh, what do I care? Hmm? The enemies around here? Oh, I blew them all up! Blasted the lot of them to splitherings! Uh, I see. And I ain't gonna stop there. Nothing's a match for me and Clarissa. We'll blow everything away! I get worn out and drowsy when I overdo it. So I try to blow up things in moderation, of course. From what she says, it ain't time for me to really show my stuff yet. So I'm just warming up until then. But man, this is fun. I wonder what it'll be like when I go all out. What kind of havoc am I gonna wreak? What? You're surprised I don't know already? Of course I don't. I've never gone all out before. Really? Like, not even once? Have you ever gone all out, Bonehead? I mean, like, all out? Like, given literally everything? Uh, yes, I pressed every button. <sighs> if you have, then how are you still alive? Are you messing with me, Bonehead? But why does going all out mean you have to be dead? Whatever, I'm done talking. I'm hankering for a fight again. Watch me blow him up with just a fraction of my power. And it sound like uh, no, like um, 
Oh my gosh. God, his name. Um. Oh, I can't. I can't. Wait, wait, hold on. Um. Oh my gosh, can't, I forgot his name. Um. Uh, Beerus. Oh my gosh, I literally almost forgot. I remember Weez, but not Beerus. It's like, it's like Beerus talking right now. It's like I'm good. I'll blow him up with just a fraction of my power. I really wish they made more Dragon Ball um, super stuff. Goku, deep regrets. Wait, but wait, 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 we're going back in time? 221? Should we go from down to up? Hmm? That outfit. Are you an ARC's operative? Wow, that's awesome! Oh, sorry. My name's Ulk. I always looked forward to being an ARC's operative, you know? So I couldn't help but ask. Did you say Ulk? I say looked forward in past tense because... I didn't make the cut. Apparently, I don't have the ability to manipulate photons. Oh. It's really a shame, but there's nothing I can do. Being an Arx is no joke, so I won't force them to accept me. No, you gotta force them. Honestly, I'll get over it. Not too late. Over right now. I'm more worried about my friend, though. Oh. Oh. He's so introverted and timid. But something suddenly made him fixated on becoming an ARC's operative. Don't tell me it's Affin. And it turns out he does have the talent. So now he's joined ARC's all by himself. It's horrible! Will he really be okay by himself? He hardly comes to see me anymore. I'm just... kind of worried about him. I think it's Affin. Pretty sure it is. That's arc, folks. Wow. Nice try with that. Oh, I missed the date. Hark! Oh, it's just you. The one from Arcs. Phew. I figured you were an enemy. That's a bullet dodged. It's just... I'm not exactly the biggest fan of fighting. Oh, Theodore. Oh, that's the that's name. I only joined ARCs because I happened to have the aptitude and because it was the in thing to do. Oh, the in thing. Honestly, this scary stuff is beyond me. <laughs> I wonder if it's too late to back out. Probably, huh? Nah. Uh, yeah, sorry you had to hear all that. I guess I'd better get going. I see, I see. Big, who he? 228. What do you want? Are you here to mock me? No. Hmm. Say what you will. My name is Zig. I used to be a master swordsmith, but I'm already dried up at a mere 75 years old. Oh my. Fashion or creativity used to come to me as easily as breathing, but now, nothing. Oh, has your head become air? My heart trembled at the decisive battle 40 years ago. Then again, during the fight for our lives 10 years ago. <laughs> for me, there is nothing more exciting than large-scale combat. Oh. What? Now that the front line has died down, my enthusiasm has died down with it. Part of me still wants to make weapons, but even now, I have my pride as a craftsman. I refuse to make anything half-hearted. Sorry, I didn't mean to grumble. For some reason, I find you very easy to open up to. Is it because I haven't moved a muscle for like, you know, five hours with five different people coming to talk to me? Probably. 
Would you indulge me about one last thing? If you ever come across something that could stoke the fires of my creativity again, I'd like you to bring it to me. Uh, give me an example. It should be something inspirational, something breathtaking. Ooh, I have an idea. My pet rock. Yes? Oh. Dang it. All right. The Cosmogenic Arms of Legend. Okay. I don't know what this is, but okay. Three, one. Hey, hey! It's me, Patty, the most informed informant of all the Ark's Ops in top form once again. Is that so? Because it didn't look like you got much useful information to me. That's all in the past. My eyes are on the future. No, oh, but I did get to know an old man I found hanging out in the break room. Einstein? He said he used to make weapons. Pretty cool, right? That must be Zig. He's a famous master swordsmith. For the most informed informant, I'm surprised you didn't already know who he was. I'm not into that sort of thing. What a great informant. Is that so? Zig the Master Swordsmith is a hard-headed old man who's been a major weapons maker for 40 years. But lately, he hasn't been making anything. It's too bad. People used to say that one day, he would make a weapon on par with the Cosmogenic Arms. But I guess that'll never happen now. What does that mean? Uh, what are Cosmogenic Arms again? Are those like the first swords that were ever made or something? That's right. They were prototypes made with no expense spared. But ended up being so powerful, they were nigh unusable. The weapons we use now are basically toned down versions of them. Hold up. You made legendary weapons off the bat. And that and then had to down own down the, their versions? Own down the power? So, so those are the highest weapons you can ever get. They didn't just plateau it as the starting point and then make more powerful weapons or something. No, no, no. They, they started with the most powerful and then went straight down. A load of Bologna. But this old man can still make them, huh? Wow, he's really impressive. Uh, no, he's never made one of those. Instead of talking all the time, maybe you should try listening for a change. Don't sweat the small stuff. Come on, this has been pretty educational for you too, right? Man, if he's that amusing, maybe I should have him make a weapon for me. You mean the same old man who hasn't been making anything for anyone lately? Uh, yeah, that guy. Okay. Rogero. Oh, are you an ARCS operative? Perhaps you've come to take on my request. Thank you very much. You're truly doing me a great service. I don't know what quest this is. I thought this was the way to lunch. Free lunch. I'm currently studying the structure of planets, but the one planet I'm lacking data on is Nevarius. Oh. I had assumed there would be more information on it, considering it's the first planet every ARCS member goes to. It's quite strange. Ah. Apologies, I get a little carried away. My name is Rogio, by the way. My request is simple. I'd like you to conduct a geological survey of Nevarius. How? I'm partly curious about its structure, but to be perfectly honest, I'm doing this because my intuition is telling me I must. Uh-huh. It's incredibly strange that its tropical forest transitions so suddenly into a tundra. We can't deny that it clearly exists, and yet, something about it just doesn't make sense. The fact that we don't have any data on such a strange phenomenon almost makes me wonder if someone's hiding something. 
Oh, I'm sorry. A scholar like myself shouldn't make such a big deal out of a mere theory. The first rule of being a good scientist is, if something is suspicious, investigate it. So I think we'll learn a lot from a good look around. I'm sorry to ask you to go to so much trouble, but I hope you'll lend me a hand. I'll get paid. Guess that's a no. Oh, him again. Three, two, ten, thirty. Anomaly on the various. A scholar Rojo had ordered the gathering data in the tundra that spread beyond the forest region. However, they remained a lingering uneasy sense that somebody or something had already gone there first. <gasps> Do this. So 30 minutes later. This is a strange is noise. Something in Ark's operative left behind. No, it feels unnatural. Yeah, he, he pooped it out. What happened? He left it there. Whoa. Based on its parameters, That's a space stone? It seems to be a weapon, and yet it has an odd shape. Aserath? Aserath. <gasps> Aserath. Got it. Found it. Oh no, he wants it. <gasps> Only. The Ronin. <gasps> oh. Are you right? I, better, I better not be using that. Uh... that. Oh, that's his name right there. So he said drop that. That was close. Hey. I was curious, so I started following you. So what's going on here? Are they... from ARCs? Yeah, it's your job to look up things like that. Uh, um... Just ran a complete search. L let's see what we've got. W what do you mean, no hits? Hey, you. State your name and affiliation. <sighs> Are you ignoring me? With that stupid mask? Lose it, you creep. Get in my way, and I'll kill you. <sighs> well, all right. Guess we're gonna do this the hard way then. Perfect. Leave it to me. Your Majesty, go. You. Wait, wait. That was it. Completed. That's really that powerful. I. Wow. I didn't know it was that powerful. I thought I was weak. Alright, good. The story going. Like my ice cream cone. You're wide open! Whoa there! He 
you chipped my sword. But Wait. you aren't looking so hot either. The sword chip? Oh, wait, it's, it's in my name. That's not that's not how you say my name. Oh, have gooey. That was nuts. Hey, you okay there? You've got some stamina leaping into a brawl right then and there. Props. So, was that masked joker after that junk you're holding? You heard a weird noise. I didn't. Neither did I. No. No, I didn't. I didn't pick up anything either. Well, save it for the lobby. Now let's get out of here. Right from hey, my backpack. You got the data you wanted. Uh, right, Professor? Yes. I have plenty. But how did you know what my request was? Yeah, well, you know how it is. The seniors always got to know everything their junior's up to. Except I'm the one who looked it up. Ugh, don't blow my cover. Come on, let's mosey. All right. Shaft. Whoa. Your partners. Okay. Resonance-induced headache. What is this? Sorry. Yeah, I'm good. Just a little headache there. I won't push my luck. I couldn't even if I wanted to. I'm sorry you had to see that after coming to check up on me. I'm sure I'll be fine with a little rest. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, it's you. Are you here to show me something? Something that might stoke my fires again? Forget it. It's no use. Another run-of-the-mill weapon could never hope to light a fire in my... my... Ellie? What is this thing? Its form is riddled with excess, and yet it's greater than the sum of its parts. How was something shaped like this ever made? For that matter, how did they even refine this kind of material? T tell me, where did you get this? You found it inside. Ice? But that's... And yet... No, oh, never mind. I can't worry about the details. I have work that must be done. I found him there stoked this fire. Would you lend me a piece of this broken weapon? I may just be able to repair it. Wait, a piece? Like a piece of this piece or the whole thing? Don't worry, I'm not looking for anything in return. In fact, I'll even make it worth your while. If there's a weapon you need, I'll make it for you. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Infinity Gauntlet. There's something about this broken, fragmented weapon that calls to me. I have to see what it's supposed to look like. So, so yes, on the Infinity Gauntlet? The fires inside me that I thought had died out are back with a vengeance. <laughs> I cannot wait. This will be fun. What are you going to look like when you're back to your true self? I'm so excited I can hardly stand it. So yes, the, the Infinity Gauntlet. Matrix has been born. Another one? A reality that was possible precisely because you arrived at the path you were supposed to. You will bear witness to many things both hereafter and henceforth. Previously as well. However, you must not avert your eyes. You must learn the truth and arrive at a solution. 
That is something only you are allowed to do. At this time, I can say nothing, because there is no meaning in saying anything more. I only ask for your faith. Wow, what a helpful lady. See that? Your image? Force can be dangerous. Oh, it's you. Hey, I could use some input. Or maybe some Rex. I had to party up with that force again. It was awful. And I didn't get a say in it. I mean, she's a force. She's got all the endurance of a paper bag, but she keeps running to the head of our formation anyway. Mm -hmm. I asked her why, and she said it was because the best defense is to destroy enemies faster. She just dove in headlong, didn't even care. So the best defense is the best offense. The best defense is the be is a is a good offense. I can't work with this. Every time I try to reason with her, she digs in her heels and refuses to listen. I barely averted the worst case scenario by doing what I could to draw enemies off her. But man, forces are such a pain to work with. You should never push stuff like that on your teammates. There's no I in team. And just so we're clear, the only reason I helped out was because I'm a hunter. I had zero ulterior motives. Mm-hmm. And it's not because she's a girl? Hello there. If you have a moment, I would like to discuss something. Or maybe gripe. I'm still on the fence about that part. See, I partied with this hunter recently. I objected, but I didn't get a say in it, right? It was just not working, though. Every time I tried to step up, he would get in my way and drone on about it being dangerous. I know hunters are tough, but they are not invincible. It makes more sense to take enemies out fast. Mm. But that stubborn fool insists on clinging to the stereotypical idea that hunters should always take point. Oh. He did protect me and all, but we were dreadfully inefficient, and I felt like I had to walk on eggshells around him. Hmm, that's not good, uh, not good cohesion there. Partying with a hunter is so tiring. I have nothing personal against them, but I would sooner stick with forces. Okay. That's fine. You don't have to, you know, join a party with anyone you don't want to. out but they still refuse to come any closer and I don't want to scare them by getting too close myself <laughs> pretty sad state of affairs huh here I am afraid to make a move out of fear of rejection uh, hey They'll run away if you get too close to the... What happened? Oh. They're staying put? Look at that. Just my calm music in the back of my backpack. Perceptions. Hi, out exploring today? 
Me? Uh, well, I've reached a point where I can get closer to them and even touch them, but... Yes, that's right. This person is a friend of mine. Hmm, I wonder if they understand me. Do you get it? Uh, this person is my friend. Yeah, saying it's over just isn't, isn't gonna help them understand you. And that's usually how it goes. It feels like I'm still missing something crucial to understanding them. I know they communicate among themselves using their voices, so I'm sure it should be possible for me to as well, but... Hmm? Me and this one? Yes, we're friends. Huh, wait, hang on. That sounded like the same number of words that I just spoke. Are your vocal organs just different from ours? Hey, wait up! Sorry, but I need to go after them. Why? Oh, okay, bye. Ooh, this path. I like it. E22. Are those your footsteps I hear? No, they're monsters. Oh, please forgive me for speaking so bluntly. I'm a bit injured is all, but please leave me be. I am not in need of your kindness. I do not deserve it. Not since all was lost ten years ago. Not until Master Gedim Holt smiles once again. No, not until he can trust someone again. Not until then can I... I... Even? Sega! Close your damn mouth! Unless you want to fly to land in it. Oh! Master Get him Holt! If you've got energy to flap your lips, then get those legs moving instead! And you, quit sticking your nose where it doesn't belong. If you don't want to get cut down before your prime, that is. And do anything. I'm terribly sorry. Okay, weird. Gotcha. B7. You say I seem awfully chipper? I'm always chipper. People say I waste a lot of energy, but I say it's better than not having any at all. See, I've got this one friend in ARCs. No motivation whatsoever. I feel bad for him, really. I would swap places in an instant if I could. Too bad I can't. The best I can do is act as backup for ARCs-related personnel. The examination for that is just as hard as the one for ARCs proper. But hey, I've got a goal, so I'll push toward it. I'll prove that motivation beats talent any day of the week. That's... Hmm, that's like willpower. Or less. Oh, 3-1. We're going backwards now. Um... Hello. We see each other a lot, huh? Sure. Um, why did you join ARCs? Oh, no, no, I didn't mean that in a bad way. I, I'm just curious. Someone I know couldn't join ARCs? She didn't have the aptitude for it, apparently. She always talked about joining ARCs one day, but she doesn't have the talent for it, I guess. That I became an ARCS operative and she didn't is well, illogical, really. If I could, I'd give my aptitude to her, but that's not the way this works. Why me? She's way more suited to being an ARCS operative than I am. Hmm.
Why is he questioning himself now? Oh, now it's 313. He's going all over the place. Ah, there you are. Excellent timing. I've taken a look at the broken weapon you brought me the other day, and I've learned that even that is only part of a greater whole. You didn't know that? Which means there are other parts from this broken weapon somewhere out there. I guess there are two more that have yet to be found. I think I could restore this weapon with makeshift parts based on what I imagine it once looked like. But that would cause it to lose what makes it so special. So I have a request. If you happen to find the other damaged parts, could you bring them to me so I can restore this weapon properly? I know it's a long shot, but it never hurts to ask, right? That's right. Hurts to ask. Persona rum rummaging through the underworks. Persona of the Mask. 322. Oh, don't get to attack him? Dang it. Oh, that, that was it. Right, Appen is here. Hooray, I guess, I think, maybe. 324. Oi, mate. What brings you out here? Looking for something? Come on now, don't be shy. You can bring me in on it. I'm looking for someone myself. Finding things is what I'm good at. Not that I've found him yet, of course. Well, I'm sure something brought us together here. I'll help you out, mate. What are you looking for? Broken weapon? Take your pick. They're everywhere. Oh, is this one special? Guess the quickest way to find out is to get our hands on it. Better to get searching than to sit there mulling it over. Let's hop to it, mate. And preferably get it done quick. There's lots of automata in the area. Ooh. Oh. Oh. I'm back. Huh? What's up, mate? What's that? Some kind of pattern? No. Letters? Hmm. I wonder what it says. It seems like it's got some kind of structure to it. Huh? I is that you over there? And you're often? Huh, what a coincidence. You seem troubled about something. What is it? Oh, you're that girl from before. Uh, Fourier, was it? Yes, that's me. I never thought I'd see you here. Hmm? Are those hieroglyphs? Hmm, it looks a lot like the doodles these little ones draw. Oh, oh, can you read this? They're saying to go this way. Hmm, I wonder what's over there. Oh, understand them now? Oh, wait! Oh, they left. They really got her wrapped around their fingers. Anyway, what do you want to do, mate? Keep going forward? That hole is way too narrow to... What are you doing? I blasted it to bits. That's not what I meant! That's obvious! I'm asking you why you do something so crazy! Because otherwise we wouldn't be able to get through! See? Now it's wide open for us! Oh, there you are! Oh, wait for me! She's certainly, uh, energetic. Want to follow them? I'll leave it up to you. I'm too exhausted to make any decisions. 
in. Oh, yes, we need the sand finally. I don't get to battle with someone. <laughs> they seem happy. That much is easy to tell. They want to show us something up ahead. Whoa! Well, what the? Oh, great. Inside, protect, machine? Oh, of course. This must be a guardian. Great. Maybe that means it won't attack us if we stay out, but that isn't an option, is it? You've done so much for me. I hope you'll let me offer what meager assistance I may. This is going to be dangerous, so stay back, okay? Don't come back out until I say so. Now then, here it goes. All right. We got a boss monster. Oh my gosh. Okay, so feed. <laughs> yeah, my weapon is too strong. at the rubble I don't see any room to squeeze in there that's where I come in a boom hey I didn't say to no how are you already done rigging it to blow I'm ready to apply myself to my fullest yes you are that's a diligent attitude for a cost but you should apply yourself to something else. Anything else. Wow. Yeah. I've got sin in my mouth. Alright, sure. Probably kept it shut. Excellent. Detonation cave in with expected parameters. It's all cleaned up. Now, what was it hiding? Another weapon. Ooh, a better ice cream cone. What's this? A weapon? Is that what you were looking for, mate? Oh, how lovely. Is that what you wanted to show us? I mean, to show this one. What I'm wondering is how the lily pads knew where it was. Um, important thing, Gil. Sorry, I can't quite parse the details. Well, we get the picture. In fact, they did us a huge favor just by bringing us here. They did. At least you found what you were looking for, mate. Good enough for me. E Ooh. Any more stuff? I love it. You came. I'm glad. You see, I was hoping to see you after this bad premonition I had. Huh? Oh, there you are, Matoy. You know better than to go out without permission. That was Matoy. I'm all right. Just a little headache. No, you're not all right. 
you're still in bad shape. Come on now, back we go. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. See you some other time. Wait, where's this bad premonition? Hello? No, no come back. Oh. Dang it. Yes, yes. This is another part of that broken weapon. There's no mistaking it. Well, no time like the present. I'm going to get to work on restoring it. Here's hoping you can find the other part, too. All right. I'm going to end the episode here, everybody. After we find out what she has to say. But yeah, these are like... A new divergence matrix has sprung forth. The balance tips. The path it, is laid bare. Like an intermission thing. I and we desire you to seek and obtain. We? I and we trust that you will accomplish this. Huh? Thanks? Oh. I'm going to end the episode here, everybody. We'll find out more in the main story. What is going on? And what is a race against time for? Two. So anyways, if you guys enjoyed this episode, I hope that I explained a lot of um, what's been going on with me um, at the beginning of the video. And that's why it was kind of long, but I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and understand everything that I'm going through. And I just want to thank you guys again so much for believing in me and staying around. And I do my best to kind of bring you, um, bring more videos to you guys. And I'm sorry that I've been unable to uh, do my part of, or stay on part for it because of uh, just cold anesthesia thing. It's just messing me up. But anyways, thank you guys again for being here and watching this video. If you guys um, enjoyed it, then please smash that like button and subscribe down below for more awesome videos. And don't forget to ring that little bell to get notifications of my uploads. If you're new here, um, oh, yeah, just ring that little bell and press it and uh, subscribe. It would be, be so wonderful if you guys did um, for new. And thank you again everybody for watching this episode. And... I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!